preachers tell a story of a theology student who stood up with his Bible and at a Karl Barth lecture demanded to know if Karl Barth believed it to be the Word of God or not. Barth kindly and calmly replied, it depends on whether you are holding the book or if it is holding you. It's one thing to hold a Bible. It's another thing entirely to be held by the living Word of God. May we be shaped, held, challenged, and enlivened by the living Word of God in our lives this morning and each morning. Grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome home, children of God. Welcome home. This morning's reading is taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, reading verses 11 to 13. Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Rejoice, change your ways, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace. Then the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet each other in Christian love. All the Christians here send you their greetings. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's one thing to hold a Bible. It's another thing to be held by that living word of God. This week, as streets filled with sorrow and rage, most of us saw the Bible being held up in front of St. John's Church And many of us were troubled by the scouring of Lafayette Park to secure that photo opportunity. My professor Kathleen O'Connor sharply wrote, He has stolen the Bible, but he does not know that it contains fire he cannot control. It's one thing to hold the Bible. It's another thing to be held by the living Word of God. To be alight and alive with the flames of love that no hate can put out, that no violence can finally silence, that no darkness can hide. And so while the cameras clicked away at the front of the church, the priests were around back, 
sheltering folk, offering water, prayers, first aid, an outdoor sanctuary to all who were in need, regardless of color or creed. They were upheld by the living word of God, their hearts set on fire for the sake of God's peace and justice. They showed up for love. And so I wonder, am I merely holding a book or am I being held by the living word of God? Being held by the living word of God is to be awake to all that God is doing in our midst. Being held by the word of God challenges my own complacency as a southern white expat preacher. Being held by the word of God calls me to more than hashtags, more than six minute sermons. Being held by the word calls me to listen, to learn, and to act. Even 5,000 miles away, I'm being called to show up for love. Just as the risen Christ bears the wounds of the cross, so does our resurrection faith bear the marks of Calvary. Ours is a God particularly present in the suffering of God's children. To say black lives matter is a theological truth. Ours is a faith that calls us to stand imperfectly as we can with all those who suffer. I am not me without you, the Scots philosopher said. Brandon, a friend, brother, and colleague in ministry who's living in the Midwest, was upheld by the word last week as he answered a friend's challenge who said, we need the white church to show up for black lives. So he put on his dog collar and he put on his COVID mask and he went downtown and he watched the speeches. He walked in the peaceful demonstrations and he mourned the death of George Floyd. And as the speakers wrapped up, he heard shouting from across the park and he saw a young white man in a tactical vest standing on the edge of a fountain screaming, all lives matter. And Brandon is a natural born teacher and I learn as much from his actions as his words. And without pause, he headed towards that fountain to talk to this young man, to talk him into stopping before something started that would be out of their control. And stepping up to the fountain, Brandon noticed immediately the assault rifle hanging from a harness on the boy's chest. A local doctor joined him and they both tried to calm the man down. It became clear, Brandon reflected, that even though he came to scare and intimidate, he actually needed to be kept safe. As more and more folk gathered round, shouts are swapped and then shoves, and the young man is punched in the face, and just before the anger boils over, he finally agrees to walk out peacefully and quietly. And so with his hands held high, he leaves the park and he approaches the police, a doctor of medicine on one side and a doctor of theology on the other, and the police lead off the young man. And a few adventures later, Brandon makes his own way back to his family. And he says, just then I felt a wave of sadness. Sadness about George Floyd, about the state of things, about how heavy things are right now. But he says, I also got to see hope at work. Hope that if enough people keep showing up and demanding justice, that the moral arc of the universe will have to bend that way. And he closed with a prayer from Wendell Berry. I know that I have life only insofar as I have love. I have no love except it come from thee. Help me, please to carry this candle against the wind. To be held by the word of God is to be set on fire by the spirit and carry that candle against the wind. To be held by the word means white folk like me showing up for black lies. To be held by the word is to show up for love. And it's, be <laughs> it's beyond time for me to show up for love. 
It's beyond time for me to do more than preach six-minute sermons. It's beyond time for me to show up for love at the ballot box, in the marketplace, to listen, to learn, to act, to show up for love in all those unrecorded moments when faced with the choice of doing what is right or doing what is easy. Am I merely holding a book or am I being held by the word? Amen. And so, friends, let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, listen to us here. You accept also the prayers of our sisters and brothers around the world, in Africa, Asia, the Pacific, the Americas, Europe, from east and from west, from the global south and the northernmost reaches, we are all one in prayer. So then, may we as one rightly embrace your image in each other, and accept our prayers graciously, even when they are somewhat strange. They are offered in your name. And so help us to pray as Christ Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so now, friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all, now and beyond forever. Amen.